Welcome back to Multiplicity Crafts. This is Miranda and this is my first video since I'm back from maternity leave and I'm going to show you how to turn drab cards into fab cards but first I was looking down at my nails and I thought you know being a former nail tech I can't go on here with my nails looking like this. I mean they're stained from the polish I just took off and uh, I need to polish them and I really really do but I need to film. Oh wait I got an idea. I will just put on my little winter gloves and do my uh, video filming with these gloves on. And so I got out my gloves and put them on and and yes they're tight fitting and I don't think they would have gotten in the way of my crafting so I thought perfect. And so here we go we're going to be doing the uh, wait. Eh, skip it. I think I'm just going to do the video with my nails stained and you'll understand because I'm a new mom and haven't had time to do my nails. <laughs> but all jokes aside, I'm just being silly. Let's begin. So for the first example, uh, we are going to do a dry embossing technique. And basically you just run a card base through uh, your embossing machine and it will dry emboss and add a nice texture to the front of your card. And even though this is a very duh tip <laughs> that a lot of you probably already knew I just thought I would mention it in case there's anybody that maybe hasn't thought that this would add a lot to your card it really does and gives it a nice look I'm going to show you some more tips on this next card idea but first let me just lay out the card how I normally would without adding any special embellishments or anything to make it look exceptional so I'm going to just add a little strip of cardstock, a sentiment, and a Julie Nutting stamp that I uh, colored up and cut out. So, I mean, it looks okay. It's just a clean and simple card, but it definitely lacks something. So, one tip is to add ink blending to your background to kind of give your image a little bit of a focal point, I guess you could say. I decided to use Picked Raspberry Distress Ink. And this ink matches back with the focal point, uh, her dress color, pretty well. But it's not too matchy-matchy. It just kind of complements it nicely. So I'm not real worried about that big blob of Distress Ink there because her skirt will cover that. And so it adds a nice little shadow behind there. Uh, another technique you can do is to add a stencil on top and give it a little bit more interest uh, for your background. But... You don't have to do this. It looks just fine with the smoother Distress Ink. In fact, after I did this, I almost liked it better before I did the stenciling, but I did want to show you both ways. And you don't really have to use the same color. Like if you want to do maybe like your first layer in the picked raspberry, and then you could go in with a completely different color of ink or something that would complement it, like maybe a mustard seed or a maybe peacock feathers if you want high contrast. Um, just any color of Distress Ink or Pigment Ink and then add that to your pink picked Raspberry Ink to add something to that but eh, I just left it all pink and so you can see here how that really adds to the backdrop and gives it a little something for your image to stand out on and then I'm going to add the little strip of color there to give the card a little bit more oomph I guess you could say but in order to make this little strip of paper look finished I'm going to take my peacock feathers distress ink and I'm just going to go around the edges of the cardstock with this and that's another tip you can do is ink the edges because most papers will have a white core in the center of them you can have um, certain papers that don't you know they're like colored core but most of them will have white, and so if you kind of ink the edges, it helps to disguise that unfinished look. Now, of course, it probably wouldn't have mattered on this card since my card base is white anyway. But I just wanted to show you how to do that. Very simple. And even take your Distress Ink on into the corners and add some shadowing. And across the top, just along the border of your strip of paper, Again, that just adds a little bit of something that normally wouldn't be there. Gives it some dimension and shadow. 
and you'll notice I'm blending on top of a little mat. It looks like I'm just doing this and getting ink all over my desk, but I'm not. I've got a little clear mat underneath there, just so you know. So now let's piece the card together and see what we have so far. I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue to the back and glue that on. And I just want to place that in the center. Now you can place it at the bottom or a little bit, uh, maybe like one third of the way up or whatever, but I just went in the middle and I'm adding my little doll stamped cutout image to the top and it's looking pretty good. And of course, you know, we want to add the sentiment and everything and yeah, it still looks good, but we can do better, right? So let's add some dimension. I'm going to take some foam squares and add to the back of this Julie Nutting stamp doll that I have stamped, colored, and cut out. And I am going to cut my foam strips down just a little bit for the smaller areas and pull the adhesive backer away and stick that down. And you'll be able to see that that really gives the card some dimension. I'm just cutting off the excess there two of where her dress hung over the edge but you can see here that it really does add to the card again adds that extra something that maybe you normally wouldn't have thought of so now it's time to move on to the sentiment this word says smile even though it looks like the eye doesn't have a dot on it it does it's just separated by a little bit of the embossed part of that paper so anyway, I got these in a swap and I had several of them sent to me and they were all cut out in white and I wanted to add shadowing. I thought, well, I can't really add shadowing if they're all white. So I just got my Copic out. It's just the black uh, Copic marker and I'm going to color the one word smile in black. Now, if you don't have a Copic, you certainly don't have to do this in Copic or any fancy marker, just a Sharpie or any black marker will do. And so I'm going to speed this up because you kind of get the idea. It's pretty easy just to color it in. And then I'm just going to make sure I get the edges of that all covered in my black and glue that on top a little bit offset and it gives me a shadow. So you can see there it really pops a lot more on the card rather than it just being plain white. So that's another way to add some fabulousness to your card. I decided to go around the panel there of paper with some faux stitching. This is optional and you can use a ruler to make it perfectly straight and look a lot nicer than probably what I'm doing here. But I just wanted to show you just to give you the idea. Now you can use this faux stitching technique along your image as well, but I decided just to just use it along the paper panel in the center of the card. I'm just using a micron pen. This is just a very fine point and it looks a little bit more finished I think with the little faux stitching on the card. So finally I am going to fill in the blank areas with some scattered items and when I say items the reason I say that is because it can be gemstones like I'm using here but it can also be sequins, it can be paint splatter, it can be anything you choose but I decided to do the flat back gems, just these little teeny tiny ones, and add those to the big blank white area. Now it probably would have looked all right with just the white and just had it more of a clean and simple card, but I just can't leave well enough alone. So I kept going and um, there's what it turned out to look like. So you'll notice the placement of my little scattered items or my gems. I created a visual triangle with them. So when you place things like sequins or gems, you'll see here how I have the three at the top, it makes a little triangle, the three there at the bottom, and then the, the next one makes the visual triangle, if you will. And you always want to use an odd number of fillers. Um, I guess it looks too contrived if you just add everything just perfectly even. So it just looks a little more natural that way. Now we're going to go to the next tip, and that's to add matting. So matting is basically just different layers in different colors for your card and it just really helps your focal point pattern paper to stand out. And not only do I like to mat the 
background, but I also like to mat my sentiment so you can see there behind the word thanks. I'm adding a black strip of paper. And then this little Hello Kitty image I actually got off of a calendar. And I just upcycled that, matted that, and glued that down. Here's another example of some layering or matting, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to show you how I match the papers. So another tip is to coordinate your colors by the image. So you can see here I'm pulling colors out of the butterfly image to use for my matting layers. That way everything coordinates nicely and you don't have anything clashing or looking like it's out of place. So basically to mat a card you just want to cut your first layer down a little bit smaller than what your card base layer is. I don't really measure usually. I just use the grid on my Fiskars paper trimmer. You'll notice those little lines there on my trimmer. I just do the first mat layer with one line up on the trimmer. The next one I go two lines up and so on. And that way I don't really have to measure. <laughs> I just use the lines and it measures for me. And so I'm going to glue that down flat. Now you could add foam in between the layers. I uh, wouldn't do it on each layer, but maybe like the final layer or something, you could add some foam just to make the top layer stand out a little bit more. So once I have that aligned on there, you can see it leaves a nice little frame peeking out behind that layer. We're going to keep going and add the other layers in. So I've got this hot pink and also have this kind of minty green. And so again, I'm going to cut that down. You'll see now I went up two lines are on the grid mark on my trimmer and two lines on the side as well. And that'll make that one a little bit smaller than the previous layer. And then on the mint green cardstock, I'm going to go up three lines and turn that around, go up three lines and cut that. And that way again, I don't have to measure anything. The trimmer measures it for me. Makes it super easy. And then I'm going to glue those together. And you could just go ahead and mat these on top, one on top of the other, and it looks fine. But if you want to add something, if you don't want to just use your trimmer to cut them out, you can do these uh, layers with like a nesting dies because they come in all different sizes. A lot of times the dies will add a little bit of something to your matting layers because it has like maybe like a little bit of a embossed stitching or it has maybe a scalloped edge or something. But for this example, I'm just showing you how it would look with the sentiment, maybe a different idea for your layout. But I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of something unique to the background instead of just gluing all the layers down flat. So another tip is to add a unique layout and you can find various layouts. They're called sketches online for free. I have one on my website, but I know there's other websites that have multiple. This one I just kind of made up myself. I'm sure it's probably been done before, but it just popped in my head to uh, just add the one diagonal corner and then add my image and my sentiment. And I'm just laying this out to show you how that would look. I think it would look a little bit nicer if maybe that bright neon yellow paper in the back was uh, possibly dry embossed and added a little texture like we discussed earlier. But just to show you, that's how it looked in the bottom corner and then in the top left corner. And this is just kind of giving you some ideas. And you can play off of this, you know, you can do it however you want or maybe even add a matting layer to your sentiment or you can do the little peanut butter and jelly triangle sandwich look <laughs> I call it where you put them together and leave a little gap in between them and then just uh, let's that background peek through and again it just is a little bit of a unique look to it so just trying to give you a few ideas and like I'd mentioned earlier you can find sketch patterns I'll show you here as an example of one that I had made up a few years ago and I have it on my website just to give you an idea you know you can put your sentiment in the middle or whatever just customize it to what you like. So now we're going to move on to the next tip and that is to add shine, add sparkle, 
add bling, anything that catches the eye. Um, I'm going to give you a few ideas here. We have the loose glitter that you can use. Of course, some people don't like to use that because it is quite messy. So if you don't like that, you can use stickles or glitter glue or anything of that nature. These just so happen to be from Michaels. Uh, they're the Studio G brand, but basically it's like stickles in a sense. And so I'll have all that linked below for you. Then another idea is if you don't like loose glitter, you can just use glitter paper or holographic paper, paper that has foiling on it. There's so many different beautiful papers to choose from. If I'm being perfectly honest, I have a little bit of a paper fetish. I just like absolutely love cardstock. I have a hard time parting with really pretty cardstock to use it even on a card. It's just, I don't know why, I just can't really part with it. And yet I buy it to use on cards. But I just love cardstock. And here you can see I'm just showing you a few examples. But my dream come true would be to own my own cardstock company and design my own cardstock. Another way is, of course, you can add deco foil yourself. Uh, there's many ways you can do this and make a unique look. Then you can add shimmer, sparkle, and shine with something like this Spectre Noir glitter pen. Um, if you don't want to use this, there's also like Wink of Stella, things like that, or glossy accents. If you want to add 3D embellishments, which adds a lot to your card, you can do that with brads or... You can use these flat back gems that are already self-adhesive or sequins. Enamel dots work great or little tiny bows that you make out of ribbon or you can make out of paper. Here I'm showing you how to use ribbon or rickrack, zip, zigzag, whatever this stuff's called. Uh, rickrack? Hmm. Uh, zip zap? <laughs> What's the name of this stuff? Rickrack, right? Am I right? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But you can uh, you can wrap that around like your card base and then just uh, tape that on the back or glue it. I'm showing you here. You can orient it different ways. But that's another tip is just to add your ribbon or something like that to your card. And that just gives it a little bit of something. The next tip I'm going to go over is to add balance using the rule of thirds. And this is kind of what we were talking about earlier with the visual triangle. So you just want to add things in threes, kind of, again, making that visual triangle. It just balances the card. Another thing you don't want to do is to make the card too matchy-matchy. Just add some variation. So here I'm showing, you'll notice the two butterflies on the right. I have them facing the same way. It just doesn't flow well for some reason. If you just tip the one butterfly the other way, it adds enough variation to where it looks better. It just is that minor thing you can do to really make your cards look better. And on the top butterfly, I have him or her, I believe it's a her, she's dressed in pink, going off the top edge. And so I'm going to glue that down and, and cut the wings off of it. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? But what I mean is just cut the excess paper from the corner. And then I'm going to add some variation to this other butterfly by adding some foam squares on the back and give the butterfly there some dimension. So again, just try to keep everything from being so matched up perfectly and just let it look more organic and flowy. And so once I trim this excess off of this top butterfly, then you'll see that it really does add a lot. Just that simple thing of having one of them go off the edge, having one of them tilted another way. Just little things you can do to make your card look nicer and make them look a little more professional and go from a drab card to a fab card. So anyway, I hope that this was very helpful. If it was, I would appreciate you leaving me a thumbs up. Sorry I kind of mumbled through this, but I still have postpartum brain. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.